The roundtable is powered by Patreon, including supporters like Justin, who is making power moves. We previously promoted the Kickstarter for his comic, Red Knight, and now I'm proud to declare Justin has launched his own publishing company, Manos Publishing. You'll be able to purchase physical copies of his works, such as Red Knight and the brand new DeVita, a Halloween themed novel. Check it out, tell him Roundtable sent ya. Link in the description. If you want a shout out on the Roundtable, consider supporting us over on Patreon. Shout outs are our highest tier. Now on to the video. Welcome back to Crystal Clear! I'm Ostrich Vox, and the brand new Steve Universe game, Unleash the Light, is here. Behind the exclusivity of Apple Arcade because, uh, you know, contracts and deals. Who knows, maybe it's not perpetual. And that, down the road, we'll be able to play this game on at least a Nintendo Switch. It's what Steven deserves. Now the trailer for this game features two brand new gems, who not only serve as the antagonist for the game, but allows the Light Trilogy to remain somewhat consistent. Or at least as consistent as you can get, considering the very first game didn't really have an antagonist, aside from the Light Prism itself. So quickly we're gonna run through this trailer, break down the nitty gritty, and be an indirect non-sponsored ad for Cartoon Network. <laughs> you love to see it. <laughs> of course, spoiler warning, yeah, with all that said, let's dive in, I'm just a sheep. All right, so right off the bat, I definitely need to play this game to fully understand, but the timeline itself seems to be set between Change Your Mind and the movie. The main thing that confuses me is that, in some of this trailer, Steven appears as his 16-year-old self, complete with the blue shirt, i.e. how he appears in the movie. But he also appears as his 14-year-old self, no jacket and the classic Red Star shirt. And 14-year-old Steven is also featured on the promotional art for this game. Not to mention, Zack's take on Steven here seems to be a blend of the 14-year-old and 16-year-old voice, meeting halfway, which also feeds into the notion that this took place during the time skip between the original series and the movie, and we already knew that this game would have alternate costumes, some of which we see in the gameplay, such as Pearl's diamond uniform, Cotton Candy Garnet, and Lapis as Bob, so clearly one one of these Stevens is the alternate costume, and the promotional art feeds into the idea that 16-year-old Steven is the alternate costume, something they could have put in late into the game to appease fans of the movie, but again, until I actually purchase the game, which will be after recording and editing this video, I do not want to give a definitive answer of which Steven design we have, but the timeline placement definitely seems to be BEFORE the movie. Another evidence of this is Pink Pearl's cracked eye, which may or may not get healed in the future episode Volleyball, and it was already confirmed beforehand that Rebecca Sugar had a role in writing this game's story. So just like Attack the Light and Save the Light, Unleash the Light should be considered a uh, level 2 canon, as in it's canon until a scenario where the events of the show would contradict the game otherwise. But again, as Sugar has mentioned on the podcast earlier this year, it's simply canon, so we can infer there's no levels required, and the events of these games are actually kept into consideration, even if it's lower priority, when crafting the story of the show. But yes, yeah, Steven has simply written up new rules for gems to follow. Something that Yellow and Blue Pearl seemed a bit confused on, whereas Pink Pearl is very eager to dive into things. Which makes sense, Steven restructuring the order of Homeworld and Gem Count as a whole likely reminds PP a lot of Pink Diamond. Parallels in my stir up trouble very soon in the show. Regardless, as Steven narrates, this era of peace was briefly disrupted by the appearance of two gems mentioned by Blue Diamond and Together Alone, i.e. two variations of Garnet, Demantoid, and Pyrope. As I mentioned earlier, this makes all the light games consistent. As with Save the Light, that villain was also a variation of Garnet's, Hesonite. But something I noticed is that we can likely identify this Demantoid as Era 2, as they seem to have their own take on Lemon Hancers, and boy oh boy, that is terrifying. But honestly, the cut of Jim Demantoid already sounds kind of, uh, cybernetic or robotic, at least in my head. So it's kind of vindicating to see how this design played out. As for Pyrope, while her gemstone is red, she appears to have a lot of pink in her color scheme, so we can assume which diamond she served in the heyday. And unlike Demantoid, who seems to lean more on technology, Pyrope, like most high-ranking gems, appears to be a bit more elegant and bougie in design. But let me just say, that dress? Those pants? Mm-mm-mm, -mm -mm, I love it. And I gotta say, their voice actresses aren't that bad either. Now, Demantoid and Pyrope are equipped with two light prisms, just like the one gifted to Hessenite, so we can assume that this was not an uncommon weapon found in Garnets during the war. But with these light prisms, 
These pair of gems aim to reconquer the universe. Luckily, Steven and the Crystal Gems are here to stop them. Going across the galaxy to reclaim the two prisms and stop this nefarious scheme. Now, considering this story is likely level 2 canon, I'm assuming some of these locations we explore will actually pop up sometime in Steve Universe future, or are the two remote colonies we actually saw during Steven's message to the universe in the film? This green location in particular seems like a good lineup. Honestly, I'm pumped for this game. They have even more fusions this time around, with the inclusion of Rainbow Quartz 2.0, Lapis, and Bismuth have joined the team, so I'm assuming the hopes of Save the Life Lapis DLC is just officially out the window. All of that work found its way here, and honestly, I just can't wait to see what nuggets of lore and information we can gather from this game, which we will for sure break down here on the channel. I promise this time, guys, really. Now, the end of this trailer kind of solidifies a placement in between Change Your Mind and the movie, as Steven remarks, We're getting pretty good at this whole liberating the galaxy thing. Whereas in the beginning of the film, he says, As much as I've loved dismantling the Empire and saving all your planets. So the process of dismantling Homeworld's Empire will unfold in this game. Although I'm sure there's more flashbacks that await us in Steven Universe future. And honestly, while some may feel burned that we didn't get to see these events in the show, I would rather we actually see this in a game. It's a great way to flesh out more locations and to see what these new gems are capable of. Due to the 11 minute time constraints, we usually don't get to explore these details as much, whereas in a video game, new colonies and worlds, they're their own levels. They're quite literally designed to be explored. So yeah, consider me sold. But as always, these are just my thoughts and I want to hear yours. What do you think? What are your thoughts on these brand new gems? And which one is your favorite? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below or tweet your thoughts at RoundTableVids. And for more of my own thoughts, you can find me at Vox. We're also on Instagram. Special thanks to MyCatSU for creating an awesome thumbnail. For more of his amazing art, you can find him on Twitter and Instagram at MyCatSU and Tumblr at MyCatSU. Link in the description. Help the Roundtable grow by either becoming a member of this channel or supporting us over at Patreon. Link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please throw a like and subscribe to the Roundtable for more great cartoon content. Thank you for watching and I hope you have an awesome day. Ultra Vox, signing out.